Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Rune Level 13 bosses. Now here I am going to be going for the Ritual Sword Talisman, which I'll be using to get an important item to help me defeat Commander Nial. Now if you're wondering, why am I in Rithe Blood Ruins if I'm looking for the Ritual Sword Talisman? That's a very good question, because I completely forgot that it wasn't here and that it's actually the Bloody Helicy instead. However, this was just a neat little fight where Oleg destroyed this guy and I thought it was a funny intro. So here, here we are. Um, but the Ritual Sword Talisman is going to be important in the next boss fight, which is against the Putrid Avatar and Kaelid, well, more specifically, the Dragon Barrow. Now, this fight is, well, it's really fun, and the main thing about it is that I trust that this Putrid Avatar, without the O-Plane Hard tier that it's guarding, is just going to be able to one-shot me with how hard it hits. So, I um, left off the Ritual Shield Talisman, and I'm going just straight up damage with the Ritual Sword Talisman. So, Oleg is aggroing the Putrid Avatar, and I am using Blasphemous Blade and Volcano Pods to um, maximize damage against the fire weakness that, that, that this Avatar has. Also, with the um, Lingering Rot after the Butt Slam attack, Ritual Shield Talisman can get broken very easily, and that's going to come up in, not this video, but next video when I'm fighting Moog. And having that broken is really bad, because then I, as soon as it, the Ritual Shield Talisman breaks, I pretty much get one shot immediately. So here I'm using Blasphemous Blade, better known as the Putrid Avatar Away 9000 to um, do a lot of damage with the Ash of War. Um, not only is it ranged, it does pure fire damage, and even though it's raining, Putrid Avatars, I believe, have a 100% fire weakness. So every little bit of fire damage I can do helps, and this guy's going down without too much trouble. The little Ash of War spam only hurts PvE, so uh, here we go. One tree down before Commander Neon. Now, with the O-Plane Hard tier, this is going to boost my resistances against um, to not get one shot, because Neon hits like a truck, especially with the split lightning damage. Um, and this is just another Erd Tree fight because it was along the way to Castle Soul, and I just love it because this Erd Tree avatar um, undergoes mitosis and divides into two, and it's just a really, really fun fight. And because I'm on the way, I might as well use Blasphemous Blade and these extra volcano pots I have to just um, deforest the land. I was going to say the land. Yeah, this is the lands between. I was thinking of things betwixt from Dark Souls 2 and Drang and Drang Laic. But as you can see here, they are going both into the two avatars, but because Taker's Flames, um, Taker's Flames hits twice, I wanted to show that off because it's really cool how quickly you can completely obliterate this boss with um, giant AoE fire. Now these guys have slightly well, they have better fire resistance than the Putrid Avatars, but it's still a weakness. So as you can see, I think it did like 750 damage relative to the 840 to the Putrid Avatar in the rain. However, still really fun fight, and uh, Oleg finishes off the bosses, and I am not upset because I was getting pushed towards a cliff. Thank you, Oleg. Alright, and now we're getting to the main part. We are going to go fight um, Neal. Now here I am showing off the route that I use to get to Neal um, without aggroing any enemies when I'm just by myself. If I didn't kill the lions at the front, by crouching you can avoid aggroing the banished knight there. And this way you can um, sneak in and get to this elevator without aggroing anything. Because the... The Stormhawk, the Snow Stormhawk, and that Banished Knight can and will follow you all the way to the Fog Gate. So that way, if you have any prep work to do for buffing, um, it can just be really rough. 
So here I am getting ready with the bewitching branches, which I'm running really low on because Nihal has, uh, he kicked my butt a few times. Um, so here I always go after the sword guy first, just because the damage I'll put on him is a lot higher, and he just has a lot of very continuous swings. Um, and then I immediately summon Oleg to, to dodge aggro, and Blasphemous Blade, although is not, um, probably the most efficient is something I can use here to knock down the other banished knight because they can get um, knocked over with it so I can get a little bit of chip on Nial but most importantly I can help Oleg um, defeat the other banished knight to turn this into a 2v1 in my favor instead of a 3v1 against. Um, here I am using a bloodling blade on the hook claws but with offhand um, bloodhound claws now this is actually um there is a little cheeky with raptor at the nest and some should have just rolled why i'm doing this with two separate claws instead of just power stanced is there are certain attacks that i know i can get an r a one-handed r1 off with claws but not an r2 but not a um, two-handed r1 so when ole is drawing aggro i can use the power the power stance move set set for extra blood loss buildup but if i'm drawing aggro i can get chip attacks and with blood flame blade without um being less um, risky and there the frost could have killed me by pulling me out of a dodge animation but i was very fortunate to not have, to not have that happen so yeah, so that's why I'm power stancing with two different claws here, is just so I have the option of using either the one-handed or two-handed move sets, depending on where aggro is. And although the snowfields are not necessarily a direct step towards Elden Beast, I will be able to get, um, I'll be able to farm rhymed crystal buds for frost pots, which should hopefully help in later boss fights, as well as I can get some other very fun equipment. Um, and now here, after that last, um, bleed, bleed proc, I hesitate for a moment, and I just go back to Blasphemous Blade, and why, I, I don't know. Just, in my head, I was just like, you know what, we're, we're doing this with the reliable weapon that got me through the first playthrough of this game. Blasphemous Blade is, uh, as you probably saw from the PvP video, it's one of my favorite weapons just in the entire franchise. Get out of here, you, you ganker boss. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying the, the low-level playthrough, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!